How's it going everybody? Texas Man here. I hope you guys are all having a fabulous day. Give this video a thumbs up if you guys really enjoyed. Subscribe if you guys haven't already. Also hit the bell notification button so you guys don't miss out on future videos or streams here on my channel. Make sure to head over to Twitch and follow me at Douglas447 with a capital D. And in this video we're going to be finishing up the Chronicles of Unit 44, The Core Arises. This is part 4 and this will uh, be the final part here for this book. After this we will be continuing on reading in the Chronicles of Unit 4. And we will be uh, reading Chronicles of Unit 4 5, Space Mageddon. So look forward to that very soon. Hope you guys enjoy. If you guys are reading along with me, we're going to be picking up in Chapter 8. Reading Chapter 8, 9, and 10. Chapter 8, Earth 3. Location, Noble Office. Great work on liberating C7S6 from the armed forces. But where is Christie? asked President Alexander. She entered the pathway of numerous hydrogen missiles while destroying the shield generators and trying to land on Dr. Ice's ship, said Douglas. But you had a vision before the battle, and you never tried to save Christy from her death at all, asked the president, while Deborah entered the room and sat down by her sons. Yes, I had a vision, but some things are not going to make a difference in this war. She would have died sooner or later, said Douglas. You still should have attempted to save her, even if it cost you your life, said Paul, reading... I'm sorry, ready to pull. Ready to pull out his blaster and have. Sorry. You should have saved her at your own. Backing up. You still should have attempted to save her, even if it cost you your life, said Paul. Ready to pull out his blaster and use it on Douglas. I'm reading ahead, I'm sorry. Please listen. If Christie lived on, I could have never landed on Isis' ship. The core fleet would have lost, and evil would be taking over the universe as we speak, said Douglas. Instead, I saw the outcome if Christie died, and that is the outcome we are living, and will result in the death of Dr. Ice very soon, said Douglas. Paul, if you lead the team and become neutral in this war, then I promise you Dr. Ice will win, and Christie's death, along with countless others, will have been for nothing, said Douglas. I'm still in, but we have a problem. We don't have a fourth team member, so how can we call this Team Unit 4, said Paul. Mr. President, with your permission, I would like to volunteer to fill the place in Unit 4, said Deborah. Douglas looked at his mother with a stunned face that she wanted to actually be shot at and risk her life instead of making hot meals every day for the President. No problem with me, but you have to talk with the leader, said the President. Deborah looked at her son and knew that asking the question would be stupid. All right, Mom, you're on the team, but I can't promise you that your part in this team is going to be easy and without danger, said Douglas. I can do this, said Deborah. Then you're part of Unit 4, said Douglas. Great. So where's Dr. Ice's base so we can kill him and end this war, asked Paul? He is on the planet Earth-3, said Deborah. Sounds like the doctor's not happy with a freezing rock anymore. Why would he move his operation to a volcanic planet where nothing thrives and where he would have to build a shield station to survive from the heat, said Douglas. Our, S our two SR spy ships have concluded that his base is finished and that Earth-3 is the most heavenly, heavenly, heavily guarded armed planet out of all seven, said Deborah. Still, why would Dr. Ice move to such a dark planet, asked Douglas. You four have to discover that out for yourselves, said the president. Unifor left Earth-2 and gathered their armies from every single core world, including the following. Cassando, Core Cloud, C7-S6, Yon-4, and some warrior trees from FE-74. The core fleet passed the planet Rickering and was now about to pass the planet Douglapalo-U, which was named after Douglas Armstrong and Paul Woodson for leading the GRG in the Universal War. Are you going to give a speech now, Douglas? asked Paul both on the B-87 with Devin and Deborah. Yes, Paul, I am, said Douglas. This was the speech I gave before the ice war came to an end. In about ten minutes, we, the Corps, will be entering the most heavily, heavenly, heaven, <laughs> we'll be entering the most heavily guarded armed territory in the universe to end what I and other Corps leaders have decided to call the ice war. While the armed ships are battling the core ships, fighters will be escorting core transporters to the ground to begin the ground assault to locate and kill Dr. Ice. Do your job well, and remember that the core will not surrender under any circumstances. Lastly, do not worry about the results, for I have seen that we will win. 
location, Earth-3. Sir, a fleet of ships is heading this way, and they appear that of the core, said the Ice General to Dr. Rice in their shield generator station. Prepare the fleet to strike and load the Devastator, said Dr. Rice. Location, core fleet. The core fleet had circled around the planet Dekopalu and now was less than 10 minutes away from being able to land on the planet Earth-3. Where is the armed fleet that has that was here hours ago, asked Ebra. You're right about that, Mom, for this is going to be an easy end, said Douglas. Look, said Evan, pointing out towards empty space. There, less than two minutes away from the planet Earth-3, was the arms fleet in greater strength than the core fleet. Devon swallowed loudly and closed his eyes, for he knew this would be possibly the end of the core also. Don't worry about that arm fleet, because soon none of them will be hovering in space anymore, said Douglas. End of the Ice War. Douglas and his mom got into core fighters inside of the V-87, began the assault on the arm fleet, and headed towards Earth-3 to find Dr. Ice. Hey, Douglas, I want to tell you something that I have kept from you, said Deborah. I have trained how to use a lightsaber, and I have my own purple lightsaber with me. So, I was wondering if I could battle Dr. Ice with you, asked Deborah. Yes, I can use all the help I can get, said Douglas. Douglas, can you hear me? This is General Array of Yon 4. My weapon systems are failing and my engines are not responding. Plus, I have several armed fighters on me. Please help, said the general and his fighter. I am coming towards you. Mom, give me covering fire, said Douglas. Zoom! Douglas changed course from landing on Earth-3 to saving General Array. Stop, stop doing crazy loops or else I'll never shoot the five fighters on your back, said Douglas. General Array stopped doing loops in space. Kaboom, kaboom, kaboom! Great shooting, Douglas, said Deborah. Thank you, but there are still two more, Douglas. Zoom! A hydrogen missile almost hit Deborah and her fighter. General Array, I need you to do a backflip, said Douglas. General Ray did a backflip, which puts the general between Douglas and Deborah in their fighters and allowed Douglas to have a clear shot at the remaining fighters. Kaboom! Kaboom! Douglas had shot down the other two fighters and ordered Deborah to follow him to Earth 2. Thank you, Douglas. I owe you one, said General Ray, before entering the battle zone again. Paul and Devon, how is the core fleet doing? asked Douglas. We are, we are okay, but some of the transporters are not able to reach the planet because of the minefield protecting the shield station that Dr. Ice is located in, said Paul. Tell those travel porters that my mom and I will find the generator and destroy it, said Douglas. My guess, uh, best guess is that it is part of the shield station, said Douglas. How can we reach the planet without entering the minefield, asked Deborah. Douglas pulled out of his pants pocket the Book of Power. Fill a buck, said Douglas. Douglas and the rest of the Corps looked to see all the mines, the armed ships, and the armed fighters gone. Let's finish this once and for all, said Douglas. The Corps fleet sent the remaining transporters for the ground assault on Earth-3, while Douglas and Christie landed their fighters to lead the assault. This shield station is much larger than I expected, said Douglas. Douglas, all the transporters have arrived safely, said Paul, still in the V-87 with Devon. Excellent. Inform the fleet that I'm going to use the Book of Power to send the fleet to Earth-2 to wait for me and the rest of us there, said Douglas. Paul informed the fleet before Douglas said, Fill a buck. The ground assault solved the core fleet vanished and prepared to kill Dr. Ice and any remaining Icemen. Chapter 9. Douglas and his friend. The assault team consisted of Douglas and Deborah from Unit 4, Rosh and his tree friends from FE-74, droids from C-7S-6, and humans from other core worlds. The transporters landed inside of the shield station, and troops were killing anything that was not core in their pathway to what appeared to be the command room. We can't progress any further, Douglas. These Icemen have perfect cover, and their target skill, targeting skills are close to our own, said General Baron of Core Cloud. Have your men hold them here. The last thing we want to do is have Dr. Ice escaping, said Douglas. What are you going to do, asked General Baron. I'm going to find General Abbey of Cassando and General Array of Yon 4 and tell them we found Dr. Ice's room and that we need more men to breach inside, said Douglas. Douglas ran past dozens of core troops and fellow trees that were throwing gigantic bricks great distances at the enemy. Douglas saw that droid General Ace of C-7S-6 and his droids had taken the weapons room and General Rosh was leading his trees against the remaining ice men, protecting the security room and the hangar bay which was the arm's last method of escaping the shield station. Where is General Abbey of Cassando? asked Douglas to General Rosh. I'm over here, said General Abbey. 
We've pushed the remaining ice men to the security room and the hangar bay, yet we can't progress because of an ion cannon or devastator that is bombing the bridges to them, said General Abbey. Have your troops follow me. We've found where Dr. Ice is hiding, but there is strong resistance blocking the way inside, said Douglas. Why can't you use the Book of Power and end this already, asked General Abbey. The Book of Power has its limits, for it hasn't had the time to recharge to where it can be used. Plus, I need it to destroy Dr. Ice, said Douglas. General Rush, your men will have to hold them here. Men of Cassandeau, follow me and General Douglas, said General Abbey. Douglas led them to the bridge that was being fought over. One side of the bridge had the core forces, the bridge with 50 icemen, and on the other side stood the room that Dr. Ice was inside of. Douglas, we took the weapons room and saw you. So what is next, said Droid General Ace. Have half of your droids help Rosh take over the security room in Hangar Bay and have the other half stay here and help me with this bridge battle, said Douglas. Joy General Ace gave his orders and stayed with Douglas at the bridge. Location, the room Dr. Ice is inside of currently. Dr. Ice was sitting in his wood chair with jewels in the wood and knew that his empire, the arm, was making its last stand against the numerous troops from the Corps. He knew that his time to live or die was near. Location, bridge battle. With the reinforcements, it wasn't long until every single Iceman was killed, and Douglas and Deborah were on the bridge to open the room's door and duel, lock, and duel Dr. Ice to the death. Douglas ordered the Corps troops to help with the takeover of the security room in the hangar bay, yet General Rosh and his tree friends came to the bridge and informed Douglas that they had taken it over already. Those that wish to watch the duel may enter, said Douglas. Douglas and Deborah pushed the open the doors and saw that Dr. Ice remained alone in his chair of jewels. I have, I have lost, haven't I, Douglas, the man that is part of Ashbacka's family tree, wielder of the Book of Power, leader of the Unifor, and commander of Earth Two's army, said Ice. Your spies have been busy, said Douglas. What is this, a gathering of your troops and corps generals from the major corps planets? This is a pleasure, said Ice. Welcome, General Abbey of Cassando, General Baron of Core Cloud, Droid General Ace of C7S6, General Array of Yon 4, and you must be General Rosh from FE74. Enjoy the show, said Dr. Ice. You've lost, Ice. Your armed fleet is destroyed, and all the Icemen that were alive on the station are dead. And now it is your turn, said Douglas. I'll make an agreement with you, Douglas. If you kill me, then all the armed planets will no longer follow the armed ways. But if I kill you and your mother, then the entire universe will obey me and will have no choice in it but to join the arm. Do we have a deal? said Ice. Douglas looked at his fellow generals and then his mom with an uncertain face. Douglas felt the book of power in his pants and could feel that it was almost charged. Douglas looked at Dr. Ice and turned on his green lightsaber. To the death, Ice, for all three of us, said Douglas. Deborah turned on her purple lightsaber, and Ice formed his ice-like lightsaber. The lightsabers clashed together, and during the duel, a conversation took place. You can't kill me with guns and lightsabers, Douglas, said Ice. I know that, and I have the one thing that can with me, said Douglas. You still won't be able to find my weakness with the Book of Power, said Ice. You have failed to mention something when you told me about who I am, said Douglas. I'm not just a creator, destroyer, or teleporter, but I am a collector as well, said Douglas. What are you? What are you? What are you going to do? Mind control me to surrender? Asked Dr. Ice in a laughing tone. Sorry for that noise. Oh, in a laughing tone. No, I plan to teleport my friend from Sector 21 and have it eat this station away with you trapped inside of it, said Douglas. The lightsaber duel was put to a halt and Douglas pulled out of his pants the Book of Power. Go to hell, Dr. Ice, said Douglas. Fool, one day I'll return, said Dr. Ice. Fill a buck, fill a buck, said Douglas. Only Dr. Ice remained on Earth 3 in the room. Douglas had teleported the ground assault team onto Earth 2 outside of the White House. Location, Earth-3. 
Dr. Ice looked out of the room's glass window and saw a black hole covering the station and coming towards him. Zoom! Dr. Ice had been sucked up into the black hole. Chapter 10. End of one war and the beginning of the next. Sorry about that noise in the background, guys. I got family watching Lord of the Rings next door to me. End of one, uh, chapter 10. End of one war and the beginning of the next. Location, Earth 2. All troops, please remain outside the White House while the generals and I, along with my mom, inform President Alexander of our victory over the arm today, said Douglas. Location, the Noble Office. Douglas and Deborah shook hands with Paul and Devin, which were happy to see their family alive after the ice war ended at last. Mr. President, I'd like to share some of my oldest wine with you, sir, to celebrate the victory over the arm, said Douglas, with a bottle of wine in his left hand. How did you defeat Dr. Ice, Douglas, asked the president. I used the Book of Power to send the black hole from Sector 21 to Earth 3 and sent ice to the fiery prison of hell, said Douglas. The black hole would then eat Earth 3, said the president. I can control the black hole, and I ordered it to only eat the station, said Douglas. How can, how can you know that he is in hell and not in the universe, asked the president. I had a vision that told me it would work, said Douglas. Well then, if Dr. Ice is dead, then open that bottle of wine and let's party, said the president. Bring a few more bottles from the V-87 so the other generals can have some also, said the president. I'm afraid none of us can stay here any longer, said George General Ace. With Dr. Ice dead and the arm defeated, we must return to our planets and inform our kind the ice war is over, said General Barron. I can't even drink wine, said General Rosh. All the major corps generals took their armies home and celebrated there instead after informing their kind of the ice war's end. On Earth 2, General, Jug General, <laughs> On Earth 2, General Douglas enjoyed wine with the President and the rest of Unit 4. Douglas decided to keep the power of controlling the black hole, the ability to teleport objects, and being able to bring one person back to life in order to destroy the book for security reasons. I would soon, I would soon learn that the book's that the Book of Power's destruction was the first wrong thing I did. The Galaxy War, the Universal War, and the Ice War are past events, but the war against evil is far from over, with Satan arising. To be continued. I hope you guys all enjoyed. Look forward to the Chronicles of Unifor 5 Space Mageddon coming out very soon, guys. You guys all have an amazing day, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.